When the sun goes down, you see, uh, you know, three or four heroin and crack dealers show up in front, and then the entire neighborhood comes to buy their drugs in, in the open air with police driving by all day. Down here, we've seen sex acts constantly, you know, where they're either drug crazed and they're doing sex acts or people are doing sex acts for money. That eye-opening account is from an interview we did back in September of 2017 with Patrick Penman. He's one of the owners here of the football factory at Bathurst in Richmond. They've been here for about 13 years. Now, when we spoke with him a couple years back, he was airing his concerns about the lack of support for this community with a safe injection site set to open. Now, Penman and pretty much everyone we've spoken to for the story agrees that the safe injection site saves lives, that it plays an important role here in the community. So area residents and and business owners say two years of calls for more security, more police, more outreach workers have gone largely ignored. When it comes to action mm -hmm. from the city, mm -hmm. from your elected representatives, yep. have you seen any? Uh, no, uh, you know, it's sort of... Uh, it's one-sided, you know, they're, they are helping people, but they're not helping all the people, I guess it is, and they do represent all the people. Penman says open-air drug dealing and use has skyrocketed since we last spoke. He and others in the area told City News they regularly watch drug deals go down, and then instead of going inside the safe injection site to use, some victims of drug addiction walk down the road and shoot up just steps away from a Catholic elementary school that is right across the street. You know, you can see it going on, like it's, and nothing's occurring, and it's the same people over and over again. It's almost like, you know, it's been localized and allowed. People say, while well, they understand the need for these centers, and they understand that they save lives, that simply their neighborhood is being left to disintegrate with with rampant drug use and drug dealers all over the place. I think that's an unfair comment, Adrian. Uh, I think the fact of the matter is people are dying of preventable deaths. A city report has previously stated that crime goes down when a safe injection site opens, though area resident and community committee member John Davidson says that businesses and condo boards he's spoken to say the crime has gone up. Petty crime is definitely up. Businesses are being broken into in the neighborhood, and I am not laying that entirely at the feet of the safe injection sites. This is a broader problem than that. but. We want the safe injection sites to be policed properly so that the neighborhoods can coexist. Councillor Joe Cressy disputes Davidson's claim, telling City News there was no noticeable rise in crime in the area. In 2017, when we spoke with the councillor, he told us a plan with Toronto Police was being put in place for all safe injection site locations. Has that happened? Yes. It has? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What does the plan look like? So we have outreach workers who do regular outreach to encourage people to move inside. Uh, we work closely through the Community Liaison Committee with 14 Division to ensure that you have a policing protocol in place and there is one in place. Off camera today, an employee at the Parkdale Queen West Community Health Centre told City News they need more support workers to help handle the growing number of drug users and dealers outside the centre. We need to heal in this neighbourhood and if we could help have uh, some help from the police and the um, uh, politicians, that would be a great thing. A Toronto police wouldn't confirm or deny if a 24-hour plan at the safe injection site has been put in place as was promised back in 2017. Now there's other issues here in this community. The toy terminal there across the street, it's since moved. When we spoke with them a couple of years back, they say they were held up at knife point. And if I take your attention to this row of homes back in 2017, we showed you them when they were boarded up. Well, as you can see today, they're still boarded up and police have had to visit multiple times for reports of fires and other things inside the property. We're told that there's reports of people cooking and using drugs in the units. Now today we learned that the homes have been sold and purchased by a new developer. That developer will be meeting with City Hall in about a week's time and we're told that they'll be offered an expedited permit to demo the houses.